What's up guys, David, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day, and today we're doing a fun one. Last week or the week before, depending on when this goes up, I did a poll asking you guys what list you wanted to see because I figured, hey, that might be fun to get some community thoughts. And we decided on top 10 cards that are really good in the TCG, but would be really bad in Duel Links if they got ported over. The mole game of Duel Links is some particularly interesting Yu-Gi-Oh because of its different rule set and truncated card pool, as well as less of a reliance on marketing and the release of physical products, has allowed Konami to cater their format on Duel Links much more closely to what the players would want for a more balanced and interesting game. I've really come around to Duel Links, I think it's actually pretty fun, despite the fact that it is very different than real TCG Yu-Gi-Oh! Which means that cards that are good in the TCG may not necessarily be good in Duel Links if they were to be ported over. And this is because Duel Links is very different from the TCG for several reasons. Our decks are smaller, 20 to 30 cards instead of 40 to 60. You only have three main columns instead of five. A big one is that you have no main phase two, which means the battle phase and things that happen during the battle phase are far more impactful. There's a seven card extra deck instead of 15, which limits your options for extra deck plays. Each player has a four card opening hand instead of a five card opening hand and combined with a different deck size changes the probability of drawing the cards you need. The avatar characters have skills, which do change the way the game works. The first turn player is picked randomly. It's not random to pick who gets to pick which does actually change the way the game works as well, in a very seemingly small but definitive fashion. The card pool is different and the ban list works differently as well. There is only single duels, not matches, and by extension, we have no side deck. Every single one of these things in and of itself is a very small change to the game, but in aggregate, they actually drastically change the way the game is played and the way the meta is formed. And these next 10 cards, if we'd stuck them in Duel Links, would probably stink. Or at very least would be drastically underpowered when compared to their TCG version. And quick last note here, we're going to try to avoid cards that like specifically reference things that don't exist in Duel Links, like Pendulums or Links or the main phase two or thing like that, because I, I think that's just not a fair thing to say about a card. Like a card that says like, when your opponent Link summons a card, blah, blah, blah. No, we're not gonna do that, that's dumb. <laughs> yes, it's completely unplayable. That, cute. But without further ado, let's get started. Number 10 is Triple Tactics Talent. Triple T here is, uh, triple, triple T? <laughs> triple T here is a very, very good card and honestly a very expensive card here in the TCG. But over in Duel Links, if this was to be ported, I don't think it'd be very good. It's only number 10, so I do think it would still be okay, but it's not nearly as good as it is here. Why is that? The way this normal spell card works, if your opponent activates a monster effect during your main phase, you can activate one of the three things that this card does. Draw two cards, a la Pot of Greed. Take control of a monster your opponent controls, a la Change of Heart. Look at your opponent's hand and shuffle a choice card into their deck, a la uh, Forceful Sentry? I always get that one in like confiscation mixed up. It also has a hard ones per turn. Now, those three effects are fan freaking tastic, but the fact that your opponent must activate a monster effect during your main phase in order to allow you to use this spell means that the card is very dependent on the current metagame and card pool in said metagame for it to even be live. Duel Links has three main monster zones, which means that you are not making giant boards of extra deck monsters with tons of negates. That is just simply not how the game works. <laughs> Max, you're only making three. And even then that would be particularly difficult because you need like four spaces in order to make three extra deck monsters <laughs> because you run out of room. Which means that a lot of disruption is actually still back row in Duel Links, or at least potentially speaking, again, depending on the meta. So with all those things combined, you may run into very many decks that just don't have a monster that would have an effect that can activate during your main phase to allow you to activate this thing. This thing is busted, but in Duel Links, I bet it's going to be dead half the time. That's such a weird thing to think about in the TCG when we have tons of hand traps and boss monsters that have some sort of interruption or interaction on your opponent's turn. We don't have really any of that. And hell, what we do have tends to be stuck in the battle phase, which is it's not going to help you. Yeah, it's weird, right? Number nine is going to be Chain Strike, or the Chain Burn deck in general. From what we have seen, the fact that we start with half life points in Duel Links, which I think I, as I'm saying, I think I forgot to mention in the intro. How did I forget that one? 
fucking idiot. You would think that a burn deck would actually be really good, but from what we have seen that Konami has taken to having the amount of effect damage cards do, like a Lava Golem here, to balance them out. So I guess if we start with half life points, all of our burn guards do half damage. Seems fair. So by that logic, you might say, Dang, if we have half life points, half damage doesn't matter. And you know, you would be right, except for the fact that we also only have three columns in our spell and trap zone, which means that cards like Chain Strike, which will do most of their damage based on what chain link they are, are gonna run into problems where you can't artificially inflate the chain. You're never gonna get like chain link five off of this thing and actually do some respectable damage with it because you simply don't have enough spaces in your board in order to do any of this crap. And that small little change really, really does make cards that are chain based really difficult to use because you can't proc them yourselves. You're now relying on your opponent to do a thing and that's never a good strategy. Not only that, but you're just going to have less room for the burn cards to begin with. So even though you only have to do half as much damage, all your cards are doing half as much, and you're also only allowed to play half that amount of cards. So you're actually only doing a quarter damage? And cards like Just Desserts and things just inherently work less? So yeah, I, I honestly think this really does bugger the strategy. The next one might seem a little strange to you, but trust me, Dark Ruler no more. <laughs> For very similar reasons to Triple Tactics, I think this is also going to be a little underwhelming in Duel Links. What this normal spell card does is negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls until the end of the turn, and for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, your opponent takes no damage, and neither player can activate monster effects in response to this card. The intent of Dark Ruler No More is to play against a giant board of negaty boys your opponent like wombo comboed out of their extra deck, where their only interaction is monster effects, and you're going to try to turn them all off so you can then proceed to try to break their board with something else. And that is why I don't think it's going to be particularly good in Duel Links. Not only is your opponent not going to have five to six crazy Link monsters on their board or whatever it is they're going to be doing to make a bunch of negates that you have to deal with, because they only have three monster columns, we also just don't have the monsters with those kinds of abilities, like I said before. So their options are less, you can summon less of them, and the thing you're going to have to really be worried about more is probably back row as it is. And even more, this tends to be kind of a side deck option in the TCG, something we don't have in Duel Links. We don't have a side deck. We don't have matches. So now you're devoting the limited 20 card to 30 card card, I guess, card space in your deck to a weird meta dependent side deck card. It's a powerful tech card for sure, but if, if you're in like a lower ladder position, it's going to be dead as hell. And even then, when you get to like towards your king of games thing, you're probably going to run up into like a, a bunch of decks that may or may not still even care about this thing. I care. It depends on the meta. It's just a very awkward card to run, especially when compared to just how good it is in the TCG. I feel like it's gonna be a running theme because number seven is Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Winter Cherries is a hand trap monster that has the following ability. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, quick effect, discard this card and reveal a monster in your extra deck. Look at your opponent's extra deck, banish all cards in their extra deck with the same name as the one you reveal. Okay, so not only are we gonna be running into a problem where we just don't have monsters in our each of our extra decks that we would really give a crap about doing this to, because again, we don't have the big bossy negaty boys like we do in the TCG, but also uh, we have a seven card extra deck and that is assuming you've done all the unlocks and things like that. Otherwise it's like five or something. So now you have extremely limited space in an extremely diverse format and you need to pick like seven monsters to put in there for your main decked cherries. That is a weird thing to do. Cherries would still be an okay card, and if you manage to resolve it against the right deck with the right card out of your extra deck, it would probably win you a game, similar to how it works in the TCG. But you're gonna run into this weird problem where it's just like half the time it's dead as hell. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? Being forced to main deck an obviously side deck catered card is just a strange thing to do. Not only that, but it would seem really out of place because we just don't like have that kind of hand trap in Duel Links. It's, it's it would just be really strange to have cherries. All right, Fairy Tale Snow. Level four light spellcaster has the following effect. If it's normal or special summon, you can target a monster your opponent controls, put it in face down defense position. As a quick effect, you can also banish seven cards from your hand, field, and or graveyard to special summon this thing from your graveyard. The Book of Moon effect is gonna be pretty solid. 
even like uh, Paleozoic Canadian is, is pretty good in Duel Links. It's, it's constantly in the popular card section. And we just got Book of Moon, like literal Book of Moon. And it's good. It's in the popular card section. But given the fact that we start with less cards, can control less cards, your deck has less cards, everything is less. Banishing seven cards is going to be a pretty heavy lift for a deck. By this extension, you could probably uh, make the same argument for uh, Eater of Millions. He always eats the number that's greater, greater. You just don't have the resources available in mass in order to activate this thing more than like once, which drastically reduces the ability of the card. All right, so these next couple ones are. Uh, Gonna seem pretty familiar if you watched my last video. TC Hyper Librarian. I'll give you one guess why this wouldn't be very good. If a monster is synchro summoned, draw a card. Cool. This level five dark spellcaster is a great card for when you are trying to extend and go even further beyond. <laughs> Yeah, I used the same joke twice in a row. I can do it. It's my content. Yeah, those three columns are going to be a real pain in the butt for any trying to uh, for, for this card. Hell, you're probably going to end up playing it like a weird floodgate against your opponent's synchro monsters <laughs> as a really, really clunky maxi. Yeah, you just don't have the room to do any kind of extensive synchro summoning. You might be able to get one draw off of it. But having three monster columns really does limit the amount of wombo combo you can do because you, you just have an advantage cap. Again, like most of the cards on the list, I don't think it would be bad per se. It just would be very underwhelming, and I bet a lot of people wouldn't even use it. Not only that, but it does lend itself to a wombo combo deck, which I, I suppose, given only seven spots in our extra deck, uh, you probably don't have a lot of room for the superfluous crap to allow you to extend farther out. So again, you're just probably gonna have a hard time even finding spot for it on your field and in your deck itself. What an odd thing Duel Links is, isn't it? And by that same argument, we have Cosmic Blazer Dragon. Cosmic Blazer Dragon's a level 12 wind dragon monster with 4k attack and defense, made of one tuner synchro monster and two or more non-tuner synchro monsters. I beg you to figure out a way to summon this in Duel Links. Having three synchro monsters on your board is a pretty heavy lift for someone in Duel Links to be able to do. Basically, the only way you're ever gonna be able to do this is to, uh, monster reborn something from your graveyard because you physically just can't put three synchro monsters on board because there is no synchro monster that is uh only one material uh at least that's in duel links i, I don't remember what that bear is I... <sighs> could you technically make the thing uh maybe it's a fantastic synchro monster as a quick effect, it can banish itself from the field and, or activate like one of its three effects to negate a card effect, to negate a summon, or to negate a battle phase. And in Duel Links, that third one actually gets a bit of a boon because we have no main phase too, so the battle phase is pretty important. And it's got 4k attack, so you know it, if it gets a, a good smack against your opponent in an open board, it's an instant game. So the card would be really, really good if you could figure out how to summon it. I don't think you can easily and reliably do it. All right, here we go. The next one uh, you can summon. It's just, it's just gonna stink. Number 86, Heroic Champion, Rongo Miniad. Ah, yes, Rongo Bongo. Rongo Bongo is not gonna do very much in Duel Links. This rank four is made of two or more level four warrior type monsters. For the uninitiated, the way that Rongo Bongo works is during your opponent's end phase, you must detach a material from this card. Also, this card gains effects depending on how much material is stuck under it. If it's got one or more, it uh, can't be killed by battle. Two or more, it gains 1500 attack and defense, putting it at a nice, brisk 3k. Three or more, it is unaffected by other card effects. Four or more, your opponent cannot normal or special summon. <laughs> well, that is a hell of a floodgate. And for five or more, you, you're once per turn, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. Most of the time, people in the TCG were managing to wombo combo off with things like, uh... Uh, bamboozle, is that what that thing's called? In order to artificially pump this thing full of materials to get it up to four or five. The board nuke is great, but what we really care about is the fact that it gets up to 3k, it's unaffected by like anything, and your opponent can't summon anything. Which means that they pretty much have to figure out how to live for like four, like three-ish turns before they can even start to come up with a way of dealing with this thing. The whole time it's just beating down whatever defenses they've had. It is extremely difficult depending on what deck you're playing to outlast Rongo Bongo. <laughs> 
Except if you were playing Duel Links, it's gonna be extremely hard to get this thing with four material. Three material, okay, sure, it's gonna be unaffected by everything, and that's, that's okay, but it's only gonna be like that for like one turn, and then which it just becomes a 3k beater, and I think your opponent's gonna be able to deal with it. I. I don't think it's gonna be able to stick on board quite as easily. I'm sure there's ways in Duel Links with the card pool to artificially inflate its, its uh, number of materials up to four. It's just a, a bit of a clumsy thing to ask a Duel Links player to do because they just can't simply put that many to begin with on the board in order to do it. It's a little different than Cosmic Blazer Dragon because if you could manage to summon Blazer, I think it'll be really, really, really strong. This thing, you can summon it, but it's, it's not as good as it could potentially be, so. <laughs> It's a, it's a really, it's a really strange thing to think about. This one's pretty funny to me because it's one of the most popular cards in the TC to ever be printed. The Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode. Okay, so, it's a god card. Those are never good. Ooh, ooh. Why is this the most popular card in the TCG? Well, it's got a really weird normal summon condition. Contribute three monsters on your opponent's side of the field to normal summon this thing to your opponent's side of the field. Basically acting like three kaijus. It blows your normal summon, but it absolutely destroys like anything decent on your opponent's side of the field and it's pretty hard for them to stop it. The rest of this thing is just a bunch of weird stuff where you can't do anything to it, it can't attack, it can't like be attacked or whatever. And uh, it returns to you after like the end of the next turn or something and you contribute it for to summon Wing Dragon, I don't know, no one uses it for that. Basically, it just breaks boards. And there's a lot going against Raw Sphere Mode here. It's fantastic in the TCG, but in Duel Links, I think it's gonna be almost unplayable. Your opponent's gonna have to completely max out their board in order for this thing even to be able to be summoned against your opponent. That, uh, that, that seems pretty lousy. What they're gonna be summoning is probably not worth you wasting your normal summon to do it. It's a weird card to main deck, like I said before with some of the other options. It's certainly a side deck card at best in most cases. Something that I've, I've, I've not touched on in this list yet, uh, we can't pick to go first or second in Duel Links, and I think cards like this, where they are very hard go second type cards, means that half the time, like literal half the time, out of your control, it's it's totally dead. So, and I think that is something that uh, us as TCG players don't really appreciate about Duel Links quite as much. The fact that we can't pick who goes first really does change the way we deck build. It's it's there is no go second type strategy in Duel Links really because it's unreliable or at least more unreliable than it would be in the TCG. Yeah, it's a strange card. All right, we do have an honorable mention this time. I did touch on at the beginning of the video that uh, due to the rule differences in Duel Links, I was gonna try to avoid cards that just simply can't function because that just this seems like an unfair thing to say. But Divine Arsenal, Double A Zeus, Sky Thunder here, technically could be summoned, I think. This rank 12 is allowed to be summoned with two level 12 monsters. I don't know how you could do that. I think it's technically possible in Duel Links, I think. Just like it's technically possible in the TCG, no one in their right mind has ever summoned him like that, but I, I think it's technically possible, hence why he's an honorable mention. It just means that if he was to be imported into Duel Links, they would have to just chop off his extra summoning condition, where if an Xe monster has battled this turn, he can just like slap himself on top of an Xe monster. Because we on the main phase too, so you literally can't do that. But because he can be summoned legitimately with two level 12s, I, I think honorable mention is, is probably okay because he ends up kind of somewhere in the middle of that, like doesn't count for the list and counts for the list. It's, it's next to impossible. But he's a good card though. Uh, quick effect, nuke the board, but it's like not a destroy, right? But I, I don't think you could summon him uh, realistically. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMENI at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. All right, number one is the card that actually inspired the idea for the list in general because we were talking about it on my Discord. And it's a weird one, evenly matched. Oh, now, before you get into that comments below uh, telling me that I'm an idiot. Evenly matched is so good! Whee! Um, think about it. Breathe, breathe. Yeah! Already are unreliably able to go second, which nerfs this card quite a bit. You need to main deck it, which again, is a weird thing to do in a format you can't choose to go second. You're going to do literally nothing in your main phase, proceed to battle phase, play just this, and then 
end your turn. You have no main phase two, so you literally can't do anything. The card mods will say, skip your turn to nuke your opponent's board. And because your opponent just simply can't play as much stuff as they can in the TCG, it's, it's also not gonna get as much of an advantage swing, necessarily speaking. It might still be good, but it's, I don't know. I, I don't, I think that's pretty lousy. It's incredibly disrespectful. Basically, skipping your turn isn't good. If your opponent doesn't overcommit or has some sort of follow-up play, they're probably just gonna win because you have literally nothing. And monsters in, in Duel Links have just as much attack power as they do in TCG, so they only need to muster 4k damage on your turn in order to just plow through your opponent. And if they did nothing and only evenly matched you and it wasn't enough to set you back like three turns, I think you got it. I think the card might actively lose you games. <laughs> It just becomes extremely clumsy to use, and uh, I don't think it's worth it unless you have like a bunch of kite roids. <laughs> And then uh, it seems like you're, you're, you're playing cards to mitigate the problems of other cards, which is, uh, that's awkward deck building. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. This one was interesting because it, it, it let me view some particularly good cards in an extremely different light. And that was, uh, it's actually quite strange. So put in the comments below what you guys think. And remember guys, if you don't troll them out who will, I'll see you guys next week. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel.